All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be reviewing a fiber laser from Commarker. I had seen some other YouTubers using this machine, and that gave me the confidence to collaborate with Commarker with a review of my own from the perspective of a knife maker. As y'all know, I've reviewed the X-Tool 20 watt diode laser in the past, and I'll be getting into what differentiates these two machines from each other later in the video. While I'm putting this thing together, I want to note that these lasers are not toys and can damage your eyes or your lungs depending on what you're engraving. The laser comes with a set of protective glasses, but I ended up ordering another set that is certified and will protect me with both lasers in my shop since they have different wavelengths. The 190 to 550 nanometer range will cover my diode laser and 800 to 1100 will cover this fiber laser. In addition, make sure to keep your shop ventilated and potentially use a fume extractor if you're going to be engraving toxic materials or in high volumes. As y'all just saw, the assembly was very straightforward, especially in contrast to putting together the gantry on my X-Tool diode laser. The only movement this fiber laser has is in the Z-axis in order for a user to focus it. I'll note here that I didn't like the quality of the plastic fences that came with the machine, so I drew up some replacements in Fusion 360 to be printed out on my Bamboo Labs P1S. In addition, I designed a 3D printed stand for the rotary that attaches to the laser bed since it hung off the side during use. Free links to these print files will be included below in the description. Commarker includes a USB stick with the necessary drivers and a copy of EasyCAD to get started. In my case, I'm already a Lightburn user, so I decided to upgrade to the Galvo version of Lightburn, which is required for fiber lasers. I'm not going to go through the boring computer setup details, but I'll put an installation guide link in the cards and or description below. Before doing my knife steel depth testing and maker's marks on knives I care about, I wanted to familiarize myself with the machine. It came with a pack of sample material like business cards and dog tags, which are good for this purpose. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that my laser wasn't in line with my fences. To determine this, I lined up one of the business cards with my fence and then etched a line in it that was drawn horizontally in Lightburn. Adjusting this was simple and only required me to loosen the column bolts and gently turn the column counterclockwise within the tolerance of the mounting holes. I grabbed a chrome dog tag out of the sample pack and started playing with the settings. I found that the settings in the text box below gave me the best results with a dark and deep etch into the dog tag. I'll be showing a lot of materials and settings in this video, but just know that for each of these, it generally takes trial and error, as well as some sacrificial material to get what you're looking for. This metal dog tag gave me some confidence to try my hand at personalizing some tools, which can be very handy not only for gifts, but also if you're working in a multi-person environment and trying to keep track of your tools. Now some of y'all may have noticed that the red dot preview frame I'm projecting onto the steel before etching isn't lining up with the final result. This took me a little time to figure out, and I fixed it after shooting most of this footage, but know that there is a software solution in Lightburn settings for this issue that allows you to offset your frame. I found that the laser did a good job etching both brass and aluminum, which I think is pretty impressive. I have seen people use this laser for etching deeply into brass coins, which makes me think with enough time you could use this to make custom brass leather stamps or things of that nature. I haven't mentioned it yet, but focusing the laser is pretty darn simple with the Z-axis motor. You basically line up your material on the bed and move the laser head until the three dots overlay each other. Here I'm etching my vice jaws to demonstrate the laser's performance on aluminum, but also to put some sweet branding in the background of my hand sanding footage going forward. I tested etching on leather and wood, but honestly this is not where a fiber laser shines. Its higher wavelength is ideal for metals, but it seems to underperform the diode laser in the realm of natural soft materials. I've seen some people have success using it on leather, but I imagine it takes a ton of time figuring out the settings. You can see on my test piece here, I ran the gambit of two light to ultra dark marks. The run data in the text box will be for the top right logo. Here you can see the performance on wood is also lackluster. If you're going to be etching wood and leather, I'd recommend going with a diode laser like the 20 watt X tool I've reviewed here on the channel. This applies to cutting as well. If you want a laser to cut out sheath templates or custom wood boxes, the diode laser is the way to go. The last thing I want to show off before moving on to my knife steel testing is the rotary tool and how this fiber laser performs on tumblers, which are popular to engrave since they can be used as gifts or making custom swag for your shop. 
It took me hours to figure out the right settings on this machine for Yeti Tumblr, so hopefully these inputs will help somebody out there looking to do this. For that person, note that I'm focusing the laser at the apex of the cup, and I'm using a small split on the rotary tool settings. I'm also running multiple passes at a lower power in an effort not to mark the underlying stainless and just burn off the powder coat. Obviously, if you're going to be doing this in your shop, make sure to have proper ventilation. As far as a rotary application for knife making, I bet you could use it to engrave some pommel nuts, but other than that, I'm drawing a blank at how I could use it in the shop. Y'all let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for how to use a rotary tool as a knife maker. Okay, now that we have familiarized ourselves with the machine, let's start testing some knife steels. The first thing I did was take a piece of 10A4 bar stock and start running some test grids for speed and power. These grids can be produced in Lightburn via a built-in testing panel. Naturally, you can run the test on speed and power, but note that you can also vary the interval and frequency for fiber lasers. With a general starting spot, I began running iterations of my maker's mark on the test piece. To evaluate these sample etches, I took the bar over to my standing bench and removed the soot around the edges with a piece of sandpaper to see if I got a nice deep etch. The first batch was washing out, so I knew I needed to go longer on the laser with multiple passes. You may notice in my notes that I'm running a fairly low power setting. My theory here is that I'm preventing any edge discoloration around my mark, but honestly, I have more testing to do in the future to confirm that. After sanding, the second batch of maker's marks came out much better. I was actually shocked at how clean and deep the third mark down was. This influenced me to do some more depth testing between the fiber laser, my normal electrochemical etching method, and the diode laser just to have a comparison for y'all on this video. To do this, I drew out some small rectangles in light burn to etch onto a piece of AEBL stainless steel with the lasers. On the fiber laser, I'm running one test at 10 passes and the other at 20 passes using the same speed and power settings I found to work with my maker's mark on the testing I just did. The 10 pass rectangle took about 23 minutes to complete and the 20 pass rectangle took about 45 minutes. It's worth mentioning that during these long etching cycles, the bar stock did get a little warm in the neighborhood of around 100 degrees. On the diode laser, I decreased the size of the rectangle to save some time since it etches much slower than the fiber laser. At 90% power, 5 millimeters per second, and 10 passes, it took around 58 minutes to etch this coupon. All right, so you can kind of see how we came out here. I'm, I'm actually a little surprised. I thought this would do slightly better since I have etched steel with this machine before. It was carbon steel, and it was a little bit of a darker finish, not as polished as this, so that could have been part of it. But I ran it around the same settings as this and got a much deeper etch with my maker's mark on some 1084. Yeah, this isn't really deep at all. You can feel it with your finger. Uh, these two definitely have some depth to them. This one is almost just on the surface. You can feel it a little bit, but like I said, I'm surprised, but we'll go over to the mini mill, get a gauge on it, and see how deep we were able to get with these lasers. Before testing with the gauge, I'm going to use my DIY electrochemical etching machine to throw another rectangle on the bar. This etcher is the primary method I use to put my maker's mark onto knives since it can get a very deep and dark etch. All right, well, I just realized that the camera wasn't on while I did the etching of this rectangle here. I did it with a little bit more than I normally do. I did 20 rounds of a one to one and a half second holds uh, with this tool. Normally I just do like 12 on my maker's mark, but I wanted to make sure we had a nice deep etch here and it's pretty big surface area. So I did 20 hits and then I did about 10 hits uh, on AC. I did 20 hits on DC. DC gets it deep, AC makes it dark. So I didn't really need to do the AC. I just wanted to kind of make a dark mark on here so y'all can see it. As a recap, we now have the electrochemically etched rectangle. We have the diode laser and two fibers to test the height on. Before going to the mill, I cleaned up the test bar with some 600 grit sandpaper just to make sure everything was nice and clean and to simulate real world conditions for etching maker's marks. You can see that a minimum amount of sanding got rid of much of the diode laser mark. The 10 pass fiber came in at around one half of a thousandth of an inch deep. The 20 pass rectangle on the fiber laser was one half to two thousandths of an inch deep. The diode laser didn't register any depth and lastly, the traditional electrochemical etching machine came in at around two and a half thousandths deep. I think this is pretty darn good results for the laser considering it wouldn't be hard to run an additional five to 10 passes to get more depth if needed. 
Now with that depth info in mind, it's time to start running some passes on actual knives. If you all subscribe to the channel, I'm sure you saw my recent little buoy build part one where I used this laser to put in my maker's mark on the Ricasso. But if you didn't, here's some of that footage. Overall, I'm very happy with the ease of lining everything up and the performance in the etching itself. I ran 20 passes on this one and afterwards I wish I ran about 25 to 30 to make it just a hair deeper, but I do consider this mark to be acceptable. I have this old knife I made a while back based on the Knife Talk build along plans and I use it in the shop for opening boxes and cutting sandpaper. I cleaned up the side of the knife that did not have my electrochemically etched maker's mark on it so that I can etch this clean side with the fiber and compare the marks to each other. Once again, I ran 20 cycles on this mark just to keep things consistent with what I've already done. As you can see here, after cleaning up the maker's mark with some sandpaper, it looks fantastic. I whipped out my digital microscope to inspect each of the marks. I've actually never done this before, so it was interesting to me to see the electrochemical etch up close and personal. When comparing the mark made by the fiber laser versus that of the electrochemical etching machine, you can see really major differences in the precision and cleanliness of the lines. This performance impressed me and it opens my mind to some other applications of being able to mark steel with this level of detail. Some things that popped in my head are the ability to make labels on the Ricasso for the materials you use in the build, the date of the build, or the hardness. You can also personalize the blade for your customers with their names or things of that nature. This got me thinking even further that I could leave Easter eggs of text on the internals of my knives. For instance, maybe a message on the tang of a glued up hidden tang knife that no one would see for potentially hundreds of years. Something about this to me is just cool and with a machine like this, it's easy to achieve. So I hope you all are able to get an idea of the capacity of this machine. I'm not an avid laser person, but I feel like it's only been within the last few years that fiber lasers have been sporting price tags that are in the realm of possibility for hobbyists. I plan on using this laser to etch my maker's mark on my work going forward, replacing my electrochemical etching machine. I'll put affiliate links to this laser as well as the free 3D print files I mentioned earlier in the video in the description below, as well as in the top comment. If you have any suggestions on things for me to try with this laser in the future or just better laser settings for me to use, please let me know in the comment section. Lastly, major thanks to Commarker for sending me this machine for review and for use in the Redbeard Ops workshop. Until the next time, like, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.